So I've been banging on the table for to get CeeDee Lamb on this team for months. And when it finally came to fruition, you know, I, I was just overjoyed, man. I, you, know, you know, Cowboy fans, man, we should really take that moment and cherish it. You know what I mean? Because I think that was one of the uh, greater moments in new age Cowboy fandom. Getting Lamb at 17 was a moment. So much to where, shout out to YouTube too, because that's our little like, that's our like time machine, right? I'm probably gonna be an old man one day or older man and CD Lamb's gonna be 30 or 31. And we're gonna revisit all of these, you know, reaction videos. You're gonna see mine, the other little compilations, hating as Eagle fans. And I think it's gonna be fantastic in the future. But um, in order for all that shit to, to, to even be kinda okay, is we gotta be a better offense, you know? If we draft CD Lamb and we terrible as offense, it don't even matter. You know, so all this falls upon Mike McCarthy, falls upon Dak Prescott, which I think Dak will be fine. I, I you know, I don't have any problems with Dak here. Um, CD Lamb, but I think this also falls upon um, Kellen Moore. I think Kellen Moore did a really good job as a year one offensive coordinator. Like if you if you gave me the job, regardless of what the record is, right? If you say, Vice, you're gonna be the offense coordinator last year, the offense was like 20th. I'm the offense coordinator for 16 games. Now we number one. You know what I mean? I think it's something to that. I think the the team can be better as an overall team type of deal. You know what I mean? But in terms of offense, I think Kellen Moore did a fantastic job. But every year we get different teams. This team ain't gonna be that team. So the first thing I recommend to Kellen Moore is to trust Blake Jarwin. You know, um, on a legacy standpoint, he ain't Jason Witten. But in 2020, he's absolutely an upgrade at tight end, right? And I'm glad we didn't we didn't draft one necessarily, um, because if you look at Blake Jarwin when we trusted Blake Jarwin, like you know whether it be dropping three three touchdowns on the Giants or whatever, getting vertical catching passes, being that receiving tight end that we want. You know, of course, when it's time for a blocking duty, we'll get Blake Bell and some of our younger guys involved or whatever. But in terms of receiving tight end, Blake Jarwin is an absolute upgrade over Jason Witten. He's a better route runner. He, you can get a lot more vertical with him. And when I say route run, I don't mean that that three yard option that Witten's only really good at. I mean, like in, in terms of nuance route running, Witten caught passes with people draped on his hip. Jarwin is actually fast enough to get away from people. Like he's fast enough, he's route runny enough to get away from people. He's a former, he's a former receiver. He's just a big ass receiver, right? So when I and also too, I think sometimes with Witten, I think when we were getting in a rhythm and we was kind of getting explosive and we was moving around a little bit, you know, we'll get a chunk play here, chunk play there. Witten will catch the ball at two yards and fall down in slow motion. Or he'll catch, y'all know the one I hate it with Witten is when he caught the ball and somebody will wrap him up and they'll just run together because they couldn't tackle him, right? But it wasn't forward progress or whatever. They just stop where you at and they just run, run, run. I hated that. Hated that mess, man. Fall down. And then when he did fall, he fell in slow motion. But when it came to Jarwin, he was actually getting downfield. He was working the seams. He was he was a mismatch on those linebackers or whatever. I think as long as we don't forget that Jarwin is the upgrade in terms of speed and downfield productivity, receiving and all that, this offense would be even better than it was last year. It's hard to be better than you were last year. Think about how good we were with 41 drops and Witten catching the ball and falling down in slow motion. We're actually gonna get more yak and we're gonna get more secure catches this year. You gotta be excited about that. I know we got CeeDee Lamb on this team, this number four, by the way. I know we got CeeDee Lamb on this team, but we can't be afraid to get him involved, you know? And I think him as a weapon, I think his involvement is gonna be the key here, right? Not to get him overly involved, like Cooper's still the guy, right? Cooper's our number one guy. Don't get, don't get Lamb overly, you know, involved like he's the number one guy. But in terms of use your mismatches, man, put them on those third corners, put them in the backfield versus some of those safeties, you know? Let them run your option stuff. Let them be jet sweep guy. Use CD Lamb, let him be quick game guy. Don't let him come in and do nuance, super experienced receiver things now. We got plenty of time for that. He's gonna be the best receiver on this team, and in my opinion, one of the best receivers in the league his third, fourth, or fifth year. We got time, relax. But as of now, 
and possibly even next year, right? Let his let his routes be simple. Let his job be relatable. Let him soak all that in and let him do things that we know he can do day one. Let him run up them seams. Let him mismatch people. Let him catch the ball quick and avoid people. That's what CeeDee Lamb's really good at. As long as we're clear with our involvement on Lamb, even more improvement. I think he can be better than what than what Cobb was, you know. So I think as 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 long as we have a have a really good role defined for Lamb, I think we'll be good for him. Um, Randall Cobb had like ninety something targets, fifty something catches last year. Just move him to Lamb. Just move all that over to City Lamb, and we'll have three thousand yard receivers this year before you even know it. So number three, right? Um, first and foremost, let me say this: it's impressive to get C.D. Lamb in general. To get him at seventeen is impressive. Even if your receivers was like Alan Hearns and Deontay Thompson and Lance Lenore, even Terrence Williams, if those were your guys and CeeDee Lamb came into that, you feel really good about it. Cooper's your number one guy. You feel really good about that. But what makes this thing so special is that Michael Gallup is also what we would consider a 1B receiver. So for my number three tip is don't forget that Michael Gallup's fantastic, right? Like we know Coop is fantastic. We know Lamb is going to be that guy. But don't be afraid to keep Gallup involved because when we needed a guy that wasn't Amari Cooper, Gallup was that guy last year. Michael Gallup caught 66 passes for 1,100 yards and six touchdowns last year. I know he can improve on that, right? So... This ain't really about, oh, well, we added Lamb. That's going to take passes away from Gallup. Nah, you added Lamb, but you took Cobb away. You took Whitten away. So I think there's even more passes to go around. You know what I mean? Um, Whitten was a safety valve, so I don't think we get as many passes to the tight ends as we would get uh, with Jarwin being there. I, just, I, I think Jarwin gets bigger plays. I don't think Jarwin gets as much volume as Whitten did. But, man, it's going to be don't, – don't, don't think that – it's not enough passes to go around. M Michael Gallup gonna get so many passes this year, man, but let's not forget Kellen Moore and Cowboy Nation. I know people in my comment section, people in my chat box, I know y'all intelligent, so I know y'all ain't forget because y'all the best. Y'all the best comments, y'all the best audience on YouTube right now. So I know y'all didn't forget, but I know it's a lot of people that, that, that are gonna forget how special Michael Gallup is. CD Lamb is cool, but CD Lamb is fantastic because Amari Cooper and Michael Gallup are in play. Number two is that we've got to be creative with Tony Pollard, man. Tony Pollard is a gangster. He's a dog. He's fantastic. I know he's he, he he's going to be way better than he is this year than he was last year, man. Um, let's kind of put these last two together. And and number one is don't forget that you have Zeke. Don't don't forget that Ezekiel Elliott is your running back. And this is what gives me a little bit of um, positive feels about Mike McCarthy is that we know Mike McCarthy got three running backs involved in his time in, in Green Bay. You know, uh, Cheeseburger Lacey will run out there, and then Starks would be like a pass-catching change of pace kind of running back. But then you got a receiver pass-catching running back in Ty Montgomery, right? So what I think – and look, man, I'm just a YouTuber, man. I, I ain't nobody. I'm just a YouTuber. I'm also a former coach, though. But in my mind, there's no re – Tony Pollard wouldn't be my, my backup running back. Some other dudes should be backup running back. I really like the undrafted free agent guy, Rico Dowdle. Um, let him be backup running back guy. But Tony should have 11 carries and 10 targets every game. 11 carries and 10 targets. I don't want to throw Zeke the ball. I've seen what happens when we throw Zeke the ball. Sure, Zeke can catch the ball, but Zeke ain't Tony catching the ball, right? What was that game? What was it? Uh, Seattle or something? When Zeke kind of went up the hashes, he was wide open. We threw it to him, and he dropped it. He stepped out of bounds or something. I, I, I you know, Zeke caught a lot of passes because he was, um, he was like check down guy out of the backfield or whatever. Can you imagine if that was Tony being check down guy out of the backfield? There's no reason we can't use a lot more running backs. Twenty personnel is the thing that we can do with um, Zeke, and you know, take Blake off the field. Put Zeke and Tony in the backfield. You can do whatever you want to do with them and keep your three receivers out there. There should be no scenario where we ain't got three receivers on. I don't want to take, I don't want to take nobody off the field. If if we want to run two tight ends, then give me empty three receivers, two tight ends, and just run quarterback draw with that. There should never be a situation where we ain't got three damn receivers on the field. But whatever situation that is, Tony could be one of the one of the, one of the tight ends. 
Tony ain't got to block nobody. Just line Tony up in different places. Just be creative with what you do with Tony. Tony could be one of your slots. I don't mind taking CD off the field for two plays to get Tony two reps at slot. Just to kind of switch things up a little bit. Let me borrow everybody's imagination real fast, right? So you line up two running backs, three receivers, and you run a triple option on the first play. No huddle. You don't want the defense to adjust. No huddle. Zeke's the only running back in the backfield now. Tony go line up at one of the slots or whatever. Cool, you run a play. No huddle. Next play. Coop then ran into the damn slot. Uh, damn, Tony then lined up at the receiver outside. CeeDee Lamb in the backfield, y'all. CeeDee Lamb in the backfield playing jet motion, uh, triple option motion from the backfield. Run no huddle again. You just got endless opportunities. Endless opportunities for things you could do with this offense, man. And just as much as our as our three receivers make us excited, just as much as Jarwin got us excited, as Zeke and 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 Dak got us excited, Tony Pollard is another weapon that was a gangster for you last year, man. Don't forget he exists. Don't forget he exists. And in terms of uh, of the damn Zeke conversation, man, look, you you put all that out there, all that pressure out there, all that turbulence and confusion out there. What defense gonna put nine in the box this year? Good luck to you. But you can't run nine man boxes, eight man boxes this year. I know we said that last year, but you really can't do it this year. You know, you you really can't because look, even if Jason Witten was in the box. I think we I think we overrated Jason Witten just a little bit. We're like, man, you can't put nine guys in the box. Well, Jason Witten gonna have that mismatch. You, I don't think that's gonna be the case this year. But if you put nine guys in the box, you're gonna have a safety on one of your slide receivers. You're gonna put a safety on a linebacker on Tony Pollard. I think we've got to take advantage of those matchups, man. We've got to take advantage of those. Like if you, if you, if even if you line up in nickel. Because you say, oh, we can't let these receivers beat us. We still got an offensive line that can run the streets. And we could just power football you when you run in the nickel. You're going to leave two, two, two linebackers in there? You're you going to give us a six-man box to work with? Good luck to you. Good luck to you. I got faith in Kellen Moore, man. I got faith in Mike McCarthy. I got more faith in Vach. Trust me, I can... Trust me, I can I can pull this thing out. I can pull this 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 white marker board out. I can draw some, you know what I'm saying? I trust me more than I trust them, but I do trust them. And with all the guys we got on this team, man, let alone the damn number one offense last year, you can improve on having the number one offense last year. We ain't got Pat Mahomes. And I know there's a lot of Cowboy fans that, that tend to think that, oh, Vach, you 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 can't win a Super Bowl unless you got Pat Mahomes. There's a lot of I Am Legend monsters that think that way. We don't have Pat Mahomes, but we can have a better offense than the Chiefs. First of all, we did have a better offense than the Chiefs. Numbers-wise, they went to the Super Bowl, whatever, salute to them. But statistically, we can have the best offense in the league times two. And that's just scary. I'm Vice Lombardi. Let me be the offense coordinator. I'll take you all to the damn Super Bowl.